Sure, there, there are a number of ways that uh, employers, plan sponsors can perhaps think differently about the use of the copay accumulator cards. And I think first and foremost, one has to think about what's the goal that one is trying to achieve with the uh, copay accumulator cards. And is it really uh, financially uh, impactful for the employer? Uh, so that, that's really the, the first issue, and our, our preliminary research would indicate that, uh, based on modeling, this literally, literally translates to about a, a penny per member per month in terms of additional cost for the employer if they allow those, those um, copay cards to be used without a um, copay accumulator program. But in terms of modifying the, the um, copay accumulator adjustment programs, th there are a number of factors that could be considered. One is, um, sort of foundationally, if an individual is on specialty drugs, um, they probably should be counseled or at least be made aware of the existence of the copay accumulator adjustment programs at the time of benefits enrollment so that they can choose perhaps to enroll in a PPL uh, plan or non-high deductible health plan that would protect them to some degree from that uh, unanticipated um, high payment when the copay support runs out. So that's n number one at the foundational level. There are a number of modifications that could be implemented with respect to um, application of the copay accumulator adjustment programs. Probably the most important is which medications are included in that um, copay accumulator adjustment program. Not all medications are. Uh, for example, in the, um, the study that, that we performed looking at this issue, um, medications for multiple sclerosis were on the preventive drug list and excluded from the eligibility for the, the copay accumulator uh, adjustment program. So employers have an opportunity to include more medications on that um, preventive drug list and be selective about which medications are subject to the copay accumulator program uh, or not. Um, the other issue from an affordability standpoint is to ensure that individuals who are perhaps low-income workers may have an opportunity to have their benefit design subsidized um, to make the benefits more equitable for them such that they can afford um, to pay the cost of the, uh, of the deductible should they choose that plan. And that kind of um, subsidy support can be provided in the form of premium reductions for copays or for um, the plan design. It can be in the form of uh, wage-based deductible levels or wage-based contrib employer contributions to the, um, to the HSA.